Hey everybody, Brent Hadlock here, TN Artist. I appreciate you coming to my channel. We're going to have some cool stuff to go over today. So make sure to hit that notification bell, subscribe, and give it a thumbs up at the end. I think you're going to enjoy it. But for now, let's roll that intro. Okay, so I thought we might do something a little fun. A little different something similar to what i did for some of my patrons over on patreon so make sure to check that out there where there's hours and hours of uh, content on painting lessons so i wanted to show you the process of how i did this so what we're going to do is we're going to paint bricks we're going to, i'm going to show you how to paint brick texture that you can use in your landscapes your cityscapes backgrounds and that kind of stuff so let me back this up here a little bit and show you um, what it is that I've done. So what I did, and I'm just going to reverse this a little bit so you can kind of see the process here. All right. So I made a bunch of lines going uh, horizontal. Then I, then I stretched them out to fill the space. Then I made a copy of it and that's just right click duplicate layer. Then I turned it, I did shift control alt T and turned it 90 degrees. Then I took the selection tool and started cutting out the unneeded lines. And it's just a matter of going through and doing it. It's a little tedious. There are faster ways to do this. Uh, why that stencil just popped up. Anyway, there are faster ways to do this in other programs, but for our rage, this is not, it. it <clears throat> this is where it's not really uh, kind of what it's set up for doing. But anyway, so this works. And then I go down and get all of these done like this so that I have them. Then made a copy of that layer and transformed it and scooted it over so that what I did was I aligned it with this section right here so that um, all of that is there. And then... I went in, selected that one vertical line, deleted it, and then did a little bit of cleanup to just make sure that I'm getting rid of all of the extra lines so that I have everything done up here. <clears throat> so now you can see that everything has here. There are still some imperfections. If we look real quick, we can see a few here and there. You can go in and clean all these up, but before I do that, I'm going to go up here and click to merge visible layers. Okay. And then I'll just go in. Now what you can do to clean these up is you just make a selection with the selection tool and then go down with the arrow for real precise and hit delete. And as you can see, it took care of that one. So I can just give this a real quick cursory glance. There's another one. Okay, and there's another one. I think that's good because we're not going to keep all of these like they are. So let me zoom back out. Okay, so as you can see, the important thing with bricks to make them look somewhat believable is that they have this staggered pattern for the joints, that you have all of that there. This is just going to bug me, so let me get rid of that. And then control D, deselects. All right, so I have all of those here. I have my brick pattern. Now I don't want to have to go through this hassle of doing this again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to right click. I'm going to do new stencil from layer contents. Boom. Now I have that. So let's make a new layer. Let's hide this layer. And you can see that I have my brick pattern. Okay. Now I'm doing this at a lower resolution. So if you were going to do this to where you wanted to be able to use it on high resolution stuff, make your stencil at high resolution. Okay. So that way it keeps it. But although this right, honestly, you could zoom in like way up. So this is like 430%. You don't really lose anything, especially if you're going to go back and paint over and change up the edges and so forth. So we have that there. So let's just go ahead and what we can do is we can, hide the stencil 
we can add it to collection. So we want to add it to our collection. So let's just go into our stencils and pick a stencil one to add it to. Um, I think I'll just add this to Steampunk. And we'll just put brick wall. Okay, and save that. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to hide the stencil. I don't need this layer anymore, so I will just trash it. All right, so now I've got that set up for what I need. So now we want to paint some actual brick and you know stone and stuff. So the first step with that is find a brick-like color. And bricks can be everything from terracotta to brown to white, um, just a lot of different colors. It's really possible to stain the ceramic any color, and plus there could be painted brick. So you can really go with anything, but I'm going to go with kind of a classic orangish red brick color. And so there's a couple different ways to do this. I would use my watercolor brushes and so forth, but I'm just going to show you how to use some of these standard ones. So I've got the paint roller. I've got that. Now I'm just going to go over this and run it around like so. Okay. Do a little bit lighter color, like so, and I'm really just kind of smearing this in here. Alright. You can just kind of go back and splotch it and smear it, like so. If it's getting to where it's kind of changing the colors and everything on you a lot, then do a new layer. Okay. You can just do some splotches if you want, like that. Okay, and then we have some really groundwork. So now I'm going to go to my palette knife. I am going to go to, uh, I don't want to do heavy blurred frosting because I really don't want it blurred. So we'll just go with frost and bring that up in size and just go over this. I'm just holding the button down, my mouse button down and going back and forth. And that's kind of splotching all those colors together. And now you can see why I wasn't really concerned with how it looked. All right, so now I have that nice modeled kind of look to it. So I'm going to make another layer. And I'm going to repeat a little bit of this process, although I am going to bring this down in size and down in size. And go with a little bit darker color. And I'm going to go to View, our Tools, Stencil Options, Show All Stencils. All right, so now I have my bricks back. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. I'm going to invert my stencil. So now I have these here. Now this is where I can really kind of play around with how I want to add in any kind of stuff. Now one of the things with this, you don't really want it to overlap like I did just right there. Um, you don't want that too much. We can come back and deal with that more because there, there's going to be overlap. But try to control it a little bit more here and it'll make your life just a little bit easier. Okay. And really what you want to do is if these are textured bricks, so not all bricks are smooth. Some of them have indentions, they have cracks, they have crevices, they have dirt that's kind of kicked in. Um, all we're trying to do is just capture some of that real quick. And the quicker you do this, the more chaotic it is, the better, because otherwise you're going to try and start making shapes. Okay, back to my knife. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. Same thing. Same exact brush. I'm just going to go over it. I blend all these together. They will fade out quite a bit because it's on its own layer. So it's going to smear it out to where it's pretty much you can't see it, which is what we want. We just want a hint of the shadow and a hint of the dirt and the grime and everything else. That way it's kind of there where we want it. Now, oh no, I got an overlap there. What do I do? I just go over it some more and kind of smooth it out. 
So that's why I said it's not a big deal. It just kind of makes your life easier if you don't have to worry about it as much. So, put a little bit down in here. And then kind of smear that out. So, okay, so now we have some of that smeared into it and it tends to look pretty good. All right. So we've got that and we can add in, we can do the exact same with some light color as well. So let's say for just because our light's coming from above. So all of these are going to be a little lighter on top. So let's put in some of that and then let's kind of smear it around like so. So that way we've got some of that color at the top that starts laying in. Now I, when I paint, I paint everything in layers, not meaning so much layers over here, but layers as in layering texture and layering the uh, paint. So I always do an underpainting building up to a finished product. Okay. And that's still what I'm doing here. I'm not trying to jump straight into the finished. I'm just building up my layers, but I'm considering now my light sources for where it would be and how I would want it to look and building that up. So all of that's kind of being calculated as I'm haphazardly throwing some of this paint in here okay so now I have that and then I can just go around and kind of soften some of these and get it softened out and have it done up to where it's starting to lay that under painting of what I want Okay. Kind of coming in there. I know this is a little bit tedious to watch, but it's just kind of the process. So I figured it might help to see the process for what I'm doing or a way to do it to give you some thoughts and ideas about things that you can do. All right, so now I have even more of that smudged in and laid out for how I want it to look, okay? So now you could play around with the layer settings here. Like for example, if you wanted to do blend modes and you wanted to change it to multiply or if you wanted to change it to other stuff, you can do that. But the way I'm painting this is very much the way I would traditionally, in other words, just building up the layers and not so much relying on these layer modes to do stuff for me okay now you can duplicate the layer and that will apply the paint a little thicker for you and you can start doing the same thing if you do that then you're going to have to start doing the same thing of softening this out and pushing it back okay um, yet again something else you can do all right but we're going to go with a kind of a softer brick look at the moment so let's make another layer let's invert this stencil okay like so let's go back to our roller brush we're going to go to a dirty kind of a grayish white because we're going to go this just the stereotypical uh, red brick white grout kind of thing okay that wasn't dirty enough it was too white so i don't want it to be that white Okay. You see how that's picking up still? I've technically run out of paint on my roller, but what I'm doing is, is I'm smearing around the paint that's there, because Art Rage is very good about that and the fact that it thinks in the realm of real paint. So how does it work if you had wet paint there on your roller, on your canvas, and you were just smearing around? Now that I've picked this up, it's reset like so you can control that somewhat if you go over to settings and you lower your loading amount 
it will run out faster. Which can give you some nice texture for there. Okay, so let's play around with this just a little bit more and kind of smear in some color just a little bit maybe a little bit of this darker all I'm doing is, is again just trying to think about where my eventual light and everything else is going to be and and how I want this to look okay now I'm going to go to my palette knife again too much just trying to break up any harsh edges that may have been left there okay so let's hide this stencil and now we have a really good start for our bricks now that's not what we want because the lines are way too straight and everything else but we can lock the transparency here now if I want to go in and, oops, and play around with some of the shadows and other areas, it's going to pick up what is there and allow me to really kind of play in the grout and break that color up so that I have kind of a dirty kind of look to it. And I can soften some of it, so like if I want to do a few lighter spots and stuff, I can. Now you'll want to watch out for hard edges like there, so if you get any, just... No, wait. I forgot it's going to do that, so... One of the quirks of Art Rage is that if it you've got transparency lock and you do anything that messes up the pixels underneath, like it would erase them or spread them out, it goes back to the white layer of the original layer. So anyway, just an odd little quirk that it does. All right, so we've got that there and we can then play around with these grout lines and the pencil tool and we can go in and start kind of erasing out, messing around, and cutting these out. And that's what you want to do. So you can start just kind of coming in with your pencil, you know, maybe kind of round off a corner, hit Alt, and grab some of the neighboring colors. You could highlight a little bit of an area maybe there's a little bit of a crack or something that comes out of there so forth and go around and maybe there's some more shadow here so what I like to do is kind of take my pencil and then select from that the pencil went over so I can really control the value of the brick and, and the color that I have there. All right. You can also use the marker tool somewhat for this. And you just got to be aware it's going to give you a sharper edge there. But what you can do is come back with your palette knife and kind of soften that off ever so slightly get that nice brick look to it and then even with the marker tool you can come in because the marker does one thing I like about the marker is it'll build up color and this is just a soft marker from the last time I had it selected okay but the main thing you want to do here is get rid of these mechanical looking edges and that's really just a matter of kind of coming in and hand drawing around each one and again now what you could do is if you do this and you get these to the shape you want you could do all of this in black and get these shapes the, the shape that you want for them 
and then save that as your stencil and then you've got rough bricks okay so you don't have to do this painting every time that would get a little bit um, tedious I guess is the best word all right so let me zoom this out real quick all right see how that's breaking that up and so essentially what you would do is you would just go around and do that to each one of these and really soften it out and play around with it and push it till you got it all done okay so i'm going to merge all these layers okay and then all i would do like i said is just keep going going around kind of and the faster you do this the it helps if you're on the right button the faster you do this the better it's going to look um, because you'll not think about different patterns of how things should look okay you can also use the oil brush like everlasting oil is my favorite one to use from the oil brush um, the only issue I have with that is that it will smear in and give it a lot more texture there. So you'll see that as well. Um, you can turn the gloss way down and that will give you a little bit different. You can turn some of the stiffness down and up the thinners and really play around with the way it looks and so forth. Okay, so my point is that you can use a lot of these different tools to really get a neat effect. And then again, you can soften stuff and push it around to really get that better kind of a look. And so that you've got that. So let's say that you've done all that with all these, because I don't want to bore you with going into all that. But you can then go from there and put a blend mode to multiply and go with like a blue a really light blue and then from here you can take like the marker and really kind of lay in where the brick may have and this is just changing of pressure all right for all that soften it back out soften it out leave some of those bumps and and you see why I'm using the frost because it leaves all those little bumps okay so I do that and build up my layer and, and stuff there and then from there I can put another texture and I can go to um, blend mode and then I can go to over I can get a yellow that's in the same color as that and maybe just a little bit lighter again going back to my marker tool I can do that I can, maybe that's a little too yellow okay maybe that is too um, then what I can do is I can just take my palette knife kind of soften it out maybe I'll go down to this orange take my like so and you can really play around with some of this to get kind of a really an interesting feel and look and as much texture as you want but as you can see you just build it up and that's really what you do so you would just repeat what I just did with this one on all of these and go around and do it and if you're further away like say that now one of the things to take in mind real quick for before I stop let's say for example this was gonna be a wall that was way back I wouldn't do as much of this okay if this wall was gonna be far back part of a um, a background okay building or whatever then I'm not gonna go in and paint each one of these but if my focus was to have this wall up here that I was then gonna do something to have it part of the scene then I'm gonna do that with each one if it's not I'm going to go and I'm going to take and start playing with some of the just a lot faster these kind of things and having highlights and having those kind of thrown in there and basically do it on a larger scale for what I was just doing and a quicker scale okay 
so that if I'm doing this for something in the background, I don't want to spend all my time on that, then I'm going to make sure that I've am putting my efforts in the right spot. Okay, so this is where I would really just quickly put in stuff, soften it like so, and then really just keep kind of working my way around. But then I would go back if this was going to be this far out, then I would go back and take my pencil or my chalk and really kind of draw in and break up the grout and just use it as my base because maybe I want some of these bricks to have real broken off sections and you know I didn't have the world's greatest brick layers when I got this done you know kind of so so that's where I would go in and do that with um, if I was doing this for background brick and that would just be again fast loose trying to get it but if this was going to be part like say the bricks were part of my main section and of my painting like it's a close-up view then I would spend some of that time here you know and do that but if they're not if they're just kind of in the background then I'm just gonna go in and, and really kind of uh, quickly play around to get the shapes and everything that I want and really just kind of push and pull stuff faster than that. So anyway, just some final thoughts to think about for that. But So that is kind of how you would go in and make bricks. You could The only other thing that really you could do on top of all of that is, you know, possibly take another layer. And if you wanted to add, like go to your custom brush, presets, and then textures and go down to like faint crackles. You could add in some of those and just go with a real um, brush that kind of quickly swipes across and does that. You could grab some of the particles and give it a splash, a splash, splash here and there. I don't know what a splash is. Anyway. Um, and just kind of play around with dirtying it up. And if any of those get to where they're too much or too big, that's just take your palette knife and soften them, uh, reduce the pressure so it doesn't obliterate them completely, perhaps. Yeah, see this pressure on almost zero works perfect. Or at zero works almost perfect. So you can add that extra texture there. Um, that's just the particle snow. Particle pores that are a little too big. Uh, particle snow, the smaller ones. So, but anyway, you can see from here how building that texture really gives you that cool look. And then it's just a matter of playing around with it from there. But you can see with this one that I spent more time on how it really gets that nice brick look. Okay. So, something to think about, some ways to do it um, for doing bricks. This went way longer than I intended, but hopefully you got something out of it and it really helps you out. So, I'll give you another one here very soon. And as always, you know, make sure to hit the like and subscribe if you got something out of this. If you have questions, something I could have covered for you a little differently. Um, I know there are ways to do this in other programs. I use other programs a lot of times when I'm doing some of this stuff. Um, but for Art Rage, this is a really good way to do it, I think. And, um, you know, do you have a different way you use? I'd love to hear that. So make sure and put that down in the comments. But if you have questions, you have comments, anything I can help with, put it down in the comments there. Come take a look on um, Patreon if you want to see about getting a lot more in-depth training on and teaching and lessons for different painting that I've done. There's hours of content there. I've got a Skillshare class that I just launched and um, I also have all, you can get my custom brushes and everything else on Gumroad, which I didn't use in this, but makes it a lot faster to do so because you can take custom brushes, like for example, my watercolor brushes, and you can get a lot of really cool, 
quick effects that help make your life a lot quicker and a lot easier like so okay so anyway i hope you got some out of it like i said i appreciate you i'm glad you're here glad you're uh you're watching my videos just make sure to like share subscribe notify share with everybody else blah 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 anyway thanks so much